Hello everyone. Okay, so in this one, uh, we do a bit about skin detailing. Um, but in order to get a high quality uh, details pores, uh, you need to get a high quality geometry. Um, you can uh, do about subdivision four, five, six, or you can use uh, HD geometry. Um, but uh, it's high a bit for my laptop. Uh, to endure uh, so I just uh, made the subdivisions uh, as high as I can um, I can make it like uh, about 11 million or so that's uh, subdivision 6 I guess um, but um, unfortunately my laptop won't be able to handle anymore so um, 11 million is not uh, bad enough um, so this is um, uh, 11 million is good enough um, now for the basic pour uh, I'm gonna use in surface to uh, cover the entire uh, mesh uh, is one basically I got from uh, Google and I tweaked it a bit in Photoshop that's if you don't have any um, alphas already um, in your position you can just do as I did um, Play with it a bit in Photoshop, then make it black and white, uh, create levels in it, and you'll get a good uh, result at the end. So now you go to surface uh, to create the general pores, as you can see. Uh, you just go to uh, surface, noise, and insert the alpha you have. There you go, and put the alpha in the alpha on slash off. You put the alpha you already created. Um, play with uh, the scale and the strength of uh, the details you want until you get a good result. For me, that's uh, good enough. This is just to get you started. The very basic pores you'll start to build on afterwards. After you find the one you need, just hit apply to mesh and it will be part of the mesh you have. Um, if you don't want it to apply it uh, now, you can just use layers, which uh, the one we're going to use um, during this entire video. Uh, you put the surface, the surface uh, pores in a layer. Yeah, maybe just uh, adjust it a bit, um, make it a bit uh, more strength so when you hit apply mesh, the details will be just as much as you need. So you just hit apply to mesh and put it in a layer. So it could be recorded. And that's about it for the basic pores. Now, after we did some basic um, details uh, using surface right here, um, you can just apply to mesh and it will be a part of the mesh itself. But I like to have a bit more control over it, over the strength and the details itself. So I use layers for that. Uh, you just make new year, a new layer from here. And afterwards you can name it. I already named mine, basic uh, details. And look at the details as we scroll over here. Look at that. It, it, it fades away a bit and if we put it back or like made it disappear 
So we have these details on layer itself. You can just, uh, when you want to see them, uh, press the I here. And when you want to dial it down a bit, each, uh, um, when you play with the, let's just scroll here, you can get the strength you need. Um, uh, I just uh, keep it like that until I see after I add the rest of the details if I want to dial it down a bit or not. Now we add uh, the rest of the details. Uh, for each one, I like to make a new layer. After we finish all the details, we can just go ahead and bake them on my mesh and it will all be part of the mesh itself. But uh, we can do that uh, in the end. To uh, record a layer to start recording and working, we can just uh, press this it will apply recording and then everything you do will be recorded in this layer when you press it again it will stop now we just like this blemishes wrinkles this is like my names for these layers blemishes like uh, the details that's normally in, in the, anyone's skin the imperfections in a skin uh, wrinkles is when you add um, smaller details around the eyes, around the mouth, um, especially on the around the mouth, and in the eyes since it's like a woman in her thirties. So now this is recording everything I do. Uh, blemishes, I used this standard brush and I changed this into spray and the alpha um, is uh, maybe um, a dot if you want um, it will do that effect of spraying something and we'll make this smaller details Now, of course, because uh, this is now I'm recording wrinkles, uh, because both are uh, the details uh, layers are on uh, each other. You won't see the blemish as much. Um, I'll show you after just we add the wrinkles, the difference between the two. Wrinkles, I use a normal damn standard brush. Um, maybe we can use spray or just normal one but we uh, use, uh, adjust the lazy mouse. Uh, lazy mouse, when you manipulate it like that and smooth it a bit, it will create this long, delicate strap that can make this fine lines around the eye. And as you see here, around the eyes, uh, of course, I'm not doing this uh, from my head. Um, I checked this uh, website. Um, I saw it in a video of uh, Jay Hill. He's a great uh, YouTuber. He makes great sculpting. Um, this uh, link, uh, I'll put it down below. Uh, it has like uh, faces up close. You can just zoom in really high and see all uh, the imperfections of the details of the skin. Uh, blemishes, uh, scars, whatever. Um, I'll uh, put it uh, down below and you can see what I mean. So I just picked one girl from this uh, page and I started creating uh, almost the same uh, uh, wrinkles around the eye. You just uh, look for the skin, uh, for the age, right age. Uh, the more um, the age increases, the more the wrinkles will appear. Alright, uh, as you can see here, these, um, uh, this is the woman I chose from the, the site I told you about. Um, I typed, I guess, face cartography and I'll show you uh, the site. Uh, a bit. Um, this is the girl I chose. Look at the eye wrinkles. Um, so this is like it's good to have a reference with you uh, because it's it's real life really. 
and these are the blemishes I was also talking about. Look at this small details. This is what makes skin details look great. And the lips, will, we'll get to that later. So I just uh, pretty much started with this image and got around my wrinkles. Um, I don't use symmetry here because, um, well, the wrinkles around the eyes really don't be symmetrical in most people. Um, I did use symmetry in the sculpting because um, it makes it easier, uh, especially if you're a beginner. And maybe after you can finish, if you want to change details, small details, so it won't be symmetrical, you can also do that. So I just uh, used a normal thin strand, thin standard and uh, just made the lazy mouse bigger and smooth it. And after I, I've done this eye, um, I get started to the next one. Um, of course, I can, as you can see here, um, the upper eyelid is not as deep as mine. Um, but still, um, I think uh, the small details around her eyes are very beautiful. Also, the great things about layers is that um, after you're done uh, all the wrinkles and you notice the strength of it, it's just too much. You can dial it down as I showed you. Just drag this uh, to the middle and see what kind of level you want and stop there. Some people don't use layers. They just apply everything on the real mesh. But I just like to have more control over everything I put. After you finish um, what you're doing, you can just uh, press this and stop recording. If you want to start again doing some more, you can just press like this, the recording button, and it will record what you do. Um, after you finish, press it again. Um, so look at this. This is the wrinkles we made. It just adds a bit more character. Um, if you turn off my basic details layer, you can see the small blemishes I was telling you about. Uh, I didn't want to make them uh, really high. Um, and in the end, we'll add a bit more details uh, that will just look more natural. Now let's add the wrinkles in the forehead. Now, most foreheads have this like fine uh, wrinkles, uh, some really small ones like here. Um, probably can't even see them really close but look they, they do exist and some has them like really really clear uh, so I just add some using the damn standard brush um, I use the uh, stroke type of spray uh, color spray it uh, it gives like uh, this uh, unclear uh, lines not all of them but it gives just the, in, the amount that i want and we use this alpha and just use it using um a damn standard or standard they both will make a good uh, effect and just make some small lines i just use a pretty normal damn standard here but uh, later on i'll use this as a standard brush to add some smaller fine details uh, on the forehead. Now as for the mouth, I will make a new layer uh, just for it um, and I thought it would be easier to make this um, 
as um, mask so all my carvings won't affect the area next to it and um, I used a normal standard brush um, a stroke uh, type spray and for this I for the alpha I used this uh, 22 alpha to create this uh, fine intersections that you normally find in the mouth like this uh, again every mouth is unique I just try to imitate this one um, but I have to say that this alpha I used it um, not much just to create some lines then I used the normal damn standard to make every small detail on, on its own I have to say this uh, took uh, a bit of time uh, it depends on how really realistic you want it. Now, as you can see, I'm still recording here. So everything, every stroke I do is recorded on this layer. This is like small for the upper lip, but now the lower lip. I just use a normal damn standard here. And I just start doing this small details like one at a time. Don't forget just to adjust your stroke, uh, lazy mouse, um, the lazy step and the lazy smooth. Uh, this will give you a fine uh, stroke make the dim standard itself uh, very delicate now maybe add a little bit of strokes on the sides here just like on this lip As we uh, add more details, I switch back to the standard and use this alpha to create some more details here. But for the lower lip, I have to say I only needed the damn standard for it. And these are the basic alphas you'll need, like this uh, kind of spiral alpha, uh, the line alpha, and the dot. That's pretty much all the, the alphas you'll need to do all the skin detailing you need. Some, of course, artists make their own brushes and others buy this uh, great butter brushes that gives them uh, the result they need. Um, but I think uh, the default just works for me just fine. And now the damn standard again and in the area below. Of course, the more time you spend on something, the better the result you'll get.
now I removed the mask and just started to add the, these details um, around the mouth, if you can see. Uh, like small scratches all around the mouth. As you can see, the more you work on uh, something, the more the higher details you get. You can even work a little bit more and get even higher details than this. And this small scratches all around the mouth. There you have it now. We stop the recording and this is the details we get on the mouth we created. And you got it all on layer. Like if you press the I button here you can and this is what we did if you find these carvings or, or the sculpting of the mouth really uh, too much you can dial it down a bit like this but I, I think what we did is good enough now we have um, this diagram uh, I found um, on uh, skin detailing. I don't know honestly who did it, but I should really thank him because he really uh, described how um, the, the, the pores on the nose and the cheek, the eye around the mouth works. And this is essentially what I used as a guide to do put the pores on my character here so let's go through it I think I made some adjustment to the wrinkles itself around the eyes and uh, I guess uh, some on the forehead. Yeah, uh, I added some small wrinkles, the one I, I said before, by using a standard brush and um, the alpha we used before. Yes, this one, but except we'll use this alpha right here. And I added some small uh, strikes here on the forehead. You can barely notice it, but it's there. Back to our wrinkles, I wanted to make these lines here very really fine so I masked the area around it and used the move brush to uh, move the skin around it Uh, now we create a layer for the pores itself. I'm gonna have four or five type of pores here, one around the eye. We're gonna create using the standard brush and these uh, alpha uh, around the eye. I 
look at that look at this small lines we got here from using this alpha and uh, like I said I do one eye at a time Afterwards, after we done with the eye, the cheek, uh, I used the same alpha, but um, with a smaller size of brush, like something like this, to do this tiny details around um, this part right here. After done the cheeks, we will head to the this part right here, uh, above the mouth. Look at the, the strokes around here. Uh, the same, the same alpha, but we can choose this stroke type here, so we can put this really clear lines around the mouth. I masked everything around this part so I can use this uh, sort of uh, stroke wounding freely without ruining the parts around it. And after I done, I remove it. It's now the result for 11 million. Uh, as you can tell, my laptop is already dying here. So. If you can afford to go higher, probably you get even more better results at the end. After we finish this part, we go to the pores on the nose and on the chin. Um, now these are like the nose and the, uh, the pores on the nose are really like shallow, but you can really see them. So for that, I use spray, but um, the dot, uh, I think the small dot give me better results. I tried, I usually try uh, several alphas until I get the one that gives me the best result. And um, when using the stainer brush, I press alt as I use it so it can dig and uh, make it inside instead of uh, um, outside so it be Z sub instead of Z add look at that mm -hmm. looks nice and the same will do to the chin This part right here we go back to using this alpha the same here you can control the, the look of this brush by manipulating the, the brush size itself bigger you get the strokes the smaller you go for smaller
And the great thing about adding details is that you, sometimes you can see some uh, small things in the sculpting cell that need to be fixed. So you just fix it itself. Like, for example, here the part wasn't exactly as smooth as it should be. And this uh, line between the upper and lower mouth also be fixed. Now this is all like the general pores. Um, next, we'll add some of the extra, um, what you can say, uh, smaller details that gives each face its uniqueness. But first, uh, let's add some wrinkles to the neck. I'm not going to do much to the body, but uh, what you really can see is some small lines on the neck. Uh, so I recalled on my wrinkles layer and um, I use the standard brush, uh, this alpha, and start uh, uh, spraying them. Uh, with a smaller brush and then bigger brush. As you can see, some smaller lines and some bigger, and uh, I don't want them to be very uh, 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 visible, so um, I can just smooth them, like use a smooth brush here really quick, just to adjust some of the things that I don't want to appear too much. And pretty much this is all I'm going to do to the body. Now back to the face. Now for uh, the extra, you can say extra details, I uh, made a layer for them and started recording. Um, I use like adding small, uh, small things on the skin that gives it its shape. Um, of course every skin is different. I think they make the skin look more more unique in its own way. Look at this, like, extra blemishes. Maybe one on their eye, or maybe one on the chin. Um, I also added some, yeah, some on the neck, and some on the forehead. Uh, just don't go over the board. Uh, enough is just a small amount that give its uniqueness. Maybe one on the nose. For this, I used for the spray part just standard brush and uh, a dot, and maybe alpha 36. And for these individuals, I just used um, normal dots and this the same alpha, just to create one or two if you want. Now, like I said, the great things about using layers and now that I have everything on separate layers, for instance, this extra details, 
after I done I just press the stop recording now you have this on layer you can like add it or hide it I have my general pores Uh, the wrinkles of the mouse the wrinkles around the eye the small blemishes and my base layer um, after we finish our layers but maybe some final toning, uh, small things uh, here and there, just to make uh, all the adjustments you need. After you finish your skin detailing, you have these uh, very several layers now. Uh, you want them to be part of the mesh, so you just go ahead and click Bake All. But this will result in the entire layers disappearing, and now we only have the uh, original mesh with the details on. Um, you can't manipulate them anymore. Good. The subdivisions. Usually I leave this step uh, final uh, before exporting maps uh, just because if I want to adjust anything I'll be doing it directly on the mesh itself, no more layers. There you have it, this is skin detailing. I hope this has been helpful for everyone who's still beginning. Thank you for watching.